Hi guys, welcome back to another day in Erin. This is an over five-year-old series where we get to know more about the people within the community. So, today we are here with Paxico. Hello, Erin. Yes, we have Erin now. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> uh, I'm actually... I want to know what you think of the merge. I'm just going to ask that first. Well, I was so relieved for the merge, to be honest. I mean... Um, we're both old uh, Tarlac players, so it's been um, a long haul up um, being merged over and over and how the community's changed and grown. But um, a lot of the soul streamers that I really, really enjoy engaging with and talking with um, about their content are from Alexina. And um, as we'll be talking about most likely, um, we're, we, you know, I've always worked on doing the community events the community fairs and so the merge is really exciting for me because i get the opportunity to work with players who literally were like oh i guess i can come on and all i can't really do anything <laughs> um yeah. and, and, the, and and mabby nerd and firelight too so i I'm, I'm really excited about that yeah it's like the same thing for me just seeing the people that you you knew were there but you just couldn't you couldn't you couldn't go over unless you had like an all yeah exactly Let's actually go into uh, the whole Aaron Fair and everything. Like, how are you involved with that? Okay, so um, it's one of my passions. Um, as you can imagine, I started back um, with the Tarlock Fair back in 2012. I first started helping the Guild Ray out. Wow. These foot goodies um, to run the obstacle course through PAR, which is a recurring event that. Um, I've been the one to lead up in the past few times that we've held it. Um, big, big, big event. It takes so much staff, so it's really hard to actually run because we need so many staff. And um, it required a lot of coordination. And that, it was just so neat to me because, you know, it was it was kind of nascent internet days as far as like MMOs go. And we were like in a team speak together and we used Google Sheets and Google Docs to keep things together and plan and it was just so neat to me because I come from an education background originally and at that time I was a professor oh, and wow. it just seemed yeah it just seemed to me so like this is literally what we're I, I want to prepare people to do is, is do cool things like this and it just felt like you know a real world application of stuff I already was doing and it felt natural and I honestly I honestly didn't realize you even had like become involved in the fair that early on too like 2012 that's a long time ago yes um that was about probably six or seven months after i'd started playing and um i was already guild leader at that point and i knew a few people in ray out so they they reached out to me and i worked i worked in whatever fairs in whatever ways i could um life being what it is um every year since that through all the different Iterations, um, Ghostly Bards, Shakaya's, uh, Evelyn's. Um, then we had a big pause, and then I was like, "I'm not, I'm not happy with this." We, the last one was 2016, no, 2015. Then we had nothing for 2016, nothing for 2017, as Shakaya was busy doing her life things. I and think I, I remember I, that. Yeah, I reached out to her, and I was like, "Can can I keep this alive? Are you okay with me?" Like seeing if I can do this now and yeah. she was like yeah sure she's always <laughs> been super sweet and, and open and she helped me she would like she told me a few people that you know had helped work on it in the past to reach out to and yeah, was definitely. really sweet about it and um you know so we, we launched it again in 2018 while we the last year that we were all together on Tarlock and um moved moved from there and it's been alive since then again yeah and then it then it became the now fair and then now yeah. it's the Aaron fair and we're having the first Aaron fair this is going to be the first Aaron fair coming up in august yep so we're yeah. in planning phases for that and you guys are still looking for volunteers right for like a yes. ton of stuff absolutely if anyone has any interest on uh working with the fair just let me know we are so happy to get people it doesn't even have to be something you're uncomfortable with. I know a lot of people get real nervous that we're going to ask them to do something like performance-based or, you know, 
it, it, there's different volunteer positions for everyone. Like I say, I came in to do the obstacle course and the main thing I did was just use X moves in Y room. You know, it, it yeah. was it was a pretty simple assignment, um, but it, it definitely built my confidence. And I, I, I feel like a lot, this is gonna sound really cheesy, but I feel like a lot of my success as a person is because I got involved in the fairs because it, it, it made me grow in ways. And, I, and, and I'd like to see other volunteers and hosts get that ex same experience. I wouldn't have the job I have today. I wouldn't have um, the friends I have if I hadn't like worked on a lot of my issues and things that I, I knew were weaknesses of mine through the fair. And that, I know it sounds cheesy. <laughs> no, no, no. It, I mean, that's that's just how it is for you. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but it's it's the truth, right? It's it's a right. huge thing for you. Yeah, I mean, I got that's where a lot of my passion comes from. You know, um, yeah. It's such a niche thing to talk about, like doing community events on a, a game, but uh, you know, I guess we were kind of forerunners in Mabby for a lot of the stuff that goes on in other more popular MMOs now so yeah and, and like it's fun to see other people having fun based on like everything that you and the others have set up right that is the absolute reward it's just it's all the it's it's this work and it's prep and then and like I say because I came from that like teaching background it was like making a lesson plan and then seeing everyone like you know <laughs> showing yeah, no, up no, and having gotcha. fun with it and it's like so here's what it looks like on paper and this is what it actually happens and it's it's neat yeah definitely so i'm actually going to backtrack to right. my my usual first question which is no sure. not going to be not going to be the first question but that's totally fine and that is how long have you been playing so <laughs> it's funny because here we are in ant hell and you said you started playing right when Eria dropped. Isn't yes. that right? Yes. Exactly <laughs> the first day of Eria, yes. So obviously as I'm an elf, I'm post Eria. This was my first character. I started around G fourteen. Oh. The end of G fourteen. G fifteen was about to happen. And that sounds so advanced, you know, because it's like, wow, fifteen generations, but that was that was really the end of twenty eleven. You know, and... it's it's odd that you say that. It, <laughs> like, I I would have thought the same. Like, yeah, that does seem like kind of well, not late, but like later for most people who've been playing. But after going through some research for some of my other videos, I realized that like G thirteen came out in I think it was two thousand eleven, something like yes. that. I think so. It's actually still right. a really long time. Yeah, it, it still feels weird because I hang out with all these, you know, old 2008ers and all that kind of stuff. And I still feel like the new kid in the block. But then I look around at like all these other players who started way after me. And yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, I guess I guess I do have some uh, uh, some seniority. I, can, I can't talk <laughs> to you about like the days when you had to pay for Paladin or, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I know the stories from hearing them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, there's still, like, yeah, that's, it's just a long time. I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say about that. Like, it's just, it's, it, it's you belong. <laughs> yeah, 11, 11 years. Once you get that, that decade, Mart, you really start reflecting on what you've done in the game. But I dropped down and there was an event. Actually, I was here because I was doing a school project. Haha. -ha. I was getting my master's in education and um, I was concentrating on doing like online learning stuff mm -hmm. and we had this really awesome professor he was like go find an online learning experience it doesn't have to be like a classroom it can be like anything you want yeah and i was already working on like ludology and like game studies that was one of the things that i had worked on all through college so naturally i was like i'm finding an online mmo i'm gonna figure it out i'm gonna find one that i think is just perfect for this and i flipped through dozens and then landed here and I, of course I was doing a project so I only had like you know I only had a few days to record it was actually for a YouTube video too oh okay and because that's he was pushing everyone to like learn how to use these at the time yeah. not you know emerging technologies yeah yeah I got <laughs> somebody to say 10 years later <laughs> but um uh so I got here uh and I only had like three or four days so I did like some longer dungeon 
Um, I did some Hamlet for the video. And of course, I dropped into Ant Hill. <laughs> because the area exploration event was going on. And um, naturally, that was asking us to do Elrods for like these these big like claymores and stuff. I, I was yeah. NBC and I'm like mad for 16K. Wow, that was amazing money back then. <laughs> And I had to save up for, you know, all my NPC elf clothes, you know, man? Like, dang. Yeah, all the NPC elf clothes. <laughs> all the expensive ones, you know? They're like 50k, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, yes. So, um, I know when you, uh, t tell me a little bit more, like, you already said this for another interview, but tell me about, like, what your experience was in Ant Hell. Uh, <laughs> I, well, okay, so, um, my experience for Ant Hell is that... I accidentally dropped in like I I think it was like it was it had to be still my first week of playing Mabby I luckily made my first friend on Mabby and um, he happened to be online at the same time I was going through area and I was like running along the desert this is before you could see ant hell like visibly like because it comes out like as a, as a puff of smoke and stuff and you can find it with the rod um, so I didn't have any pets to run through really fast and I was, I just ran across the entire desert and I just fell in. Uh, and I thought to myself like, oh my god, I'm stuck. Like, I can't get out because like, once you fall in, yep. you, like, you can't go back. <laughs> Suddenly you're in a literal maze. Yeah. So <laughs> if it wasn't for that one friend, I actually wouldn't be on Mabby because I would have felt like, okay, well I'm stuck and I don't know how to get out and, you know, I'm done with this game. But I messaged him, and he's like, just continent warp. And I'm like, continent what? Oh, uh, you, you <laughs> got- So yeah, you, you got the actual, like, best advice. Just cont warp! Oh yeah. my word. Yeah. I, I wish I would have even known that was a mechanic. Oh god. <laughs> did you, like, did you run through, like- Oh yeah, I ran through multiple times. Dozens of times, because I kept falling back in. And what you're saying is, it was really gaslighting, because- that you at least acknowledge there was a period of time where there was no smoke. Yeah. There was like no graphical effect. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I kept falling back in. And then later on, when I would tell people about like my start, they'd be like, well, that's kind like, of Like, how, how do you just- you see the sand? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like, like how do you just drop in? Smoke cloud? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, it wasn't there at the time. So, I, I mean, I know when I was working on the project, um, that I was working on for grad school, that that was where I stopped to make the video and turn it in. Oh, okay. And I thought it was done. I thought it was done with this game. I was like, yeah, this was really cool. This was interesting. It's a great learning environment. It has like real life applications. Um, people learn lots of information about how things are made through the life skills. And yeah. just, you know, I had all sorts of, you know, good angles on this, but the game wouldn't leave my mind. You just kind of so stayed. <laughs> I came back and I stayed. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't gone for more than a few days. That was just crunch time, you know? <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, I took off from there and I joined the first guild that I saw. Yes. Lethal Drive? <laughs> or, or was it no, Rayo? No. 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 Capulet? So I was an elf, so I ran oh, into... Oh, okay, okay. Uh, you know, this is actually a word I'm I'm I've known to be a stickler in the community about Gaelic pronunciation and making sure we, oh, we are gosh. are good about pronunciation. But then I get over to Iria and none of these words hardly are Gaelic. So oh, it's okay. everyone's guess. You know, we don't know the etymologies for a lot of them. So mm -hmm. Conuous? What what is what is the like I don't know, I just call it Conuous. Yeah, okay. I, I feel like that seems right. It, so, I mean, it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> that was the name of my first guild, even. So. Oh, I feel like I remember that name. Maybe was it? Was it? And because you, you were back on Tarlat, I call it Tarlat. Mm -hmm. By the way, you probably. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't remember. Like, was it like a popular guild at the time? Was it active? It was semi-active. It was it was very close knit in its own ways, which you know, introduced to me what I really wanted to heart, like, like, it was, it's a large part of the success that I found in being a guild leader was through Conulus. Um, the leader, who I'll never forget, but she doesn't play anymore, um, was Moontear. 
now. The reason she doesn't oh, play anymore. Sorry, I, I that that name you just remember came. Remember her? I, for some uh -huh. reason, I remember that name. I don't know why, but I remember it. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. She was pretty prevalent. She was like one of the top archer elves of the time. Ooh. Her level seemed insane to us all. I think she was like three k. Oh wow! Well. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was then. like in game, and she was bored waiting for content. So, running a guild was natural for her. And it was yeah. an elf only guild. Um, so I met a lot of wonderful elves and we would recruit for it. But our happy story ended when she got black robed in no. the 2012. Wait, maybe that's why I, I know her name. No, I feel like that's not. But, oh. <laughs> that, that's sad. Yeah, that's, one of the most highly really progressed characters in black robed and Aww. nothing. Nothing ever came of it. And so she finally made an alt later and came back. and. But I didn't know it wasn't the same what was or... going on. We didn't have a place, and that after that, I became, after this, I became very stalwart with like my guildies and friends, and making sure we had connection outside of just Mavi. Yeah, because uh, you know, I even dropped down in the middle of there being no no friends list. That was the, oh. literally the reason I am so stalwart about staying on Channel Five. You were is, just like there was, dropping there was no all this list. memory stuff. <laughs> oh, no. So this, you know, there was no friends list. So how would I meet up with my friends? Uh, I would be like, tomorrow at 8 p.m. EST, um, whisper me on Channel 5. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just hear that, that very slight, if you have your sound on, it's like a very slight little little noise. And you're like, oh, I got a whisper. <laughs> yup. That, that noise is still like special to me because of that, you know? Because that was how all my early Mavi friendships were navigated until they got that fixed. And that was a good five months, I want to say. Because that was during all of that hack hacking that just, you yeah. know, was so difficult for the game to overcome. Yeah. Talk about the Wild West. <laughs> the it seems Wild fitting West I Mavi. started in a desert. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. And then, yeah, you, you ended up in Ant Hill. And so, you know, since then, um, I've made plenty, plenty of friends, and, you know, I took, when the, the black roaming happened, I felt really sad about Moontir losing her guilt, but I, I didn't have connection with her, so I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. So I got involved with a, another couple of friends who were starting up this strat guild, and, um, they... I was approached about being made officer for it because there was literally three people at the time. Yeah. And we were getting increasingly frustrated in the guild I came from because we were elf only. And a lot of us knew humans and a lot of us, well, there were no giants back then. They were myths. Um, <laughs> so I played a giant character too and my, my giant wasn't allowed in the guild. And yeah. I still play that giant to this day. But, uh, so we were unhappy with that in general and she was gone. So we all... We all sprung over to Lethal Drive. Um, and it just started from there. 2012 was when I really became leader of the guild. Um, was officer before that. So I was really, really nascent. I was about two months into the game when I was handed officer. Wow. That's... <laughs> 2012 is a big year for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we could do so much. Uh, one thing I'm known for is my memory in general. So, um, you know, I, I could tell you so many stories, just detailed things about stuff, as, as is probably evident by now. But, um, yeah, uh, and most of my friends and most of my cohort in the guild... Um, you know, was from that 2012 time, and we've we've been together since for 11 years. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a long time. Yeah, I mean, these are these are lifelong friends. I can't even say like, would you forget them? No, no, you, these are people who are ingrained in the fabric of my life. You know. Do you want to like give them shoutouts? Sure, would love to. Um, Marshmallow plus Tarlock. You will see him as longest name in the game in the official server often. Oh, wow. Um, because <laughs> that day with the plus Tarlock is pretty impressive. Um, uh, you know, w we met really, really late in 2011 and just hit it off. He gave me this, actually, this purple rose in my hair. Um, Aww. we've been, we've been best friends for a long time. Um, uh, there's Luke3556 who joined. There's, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, mercy. There's so many. 
Uh, <laughs> it's just so many guildies. Um, and, and, you know, I got to where I was also, like, because I... Oh, oh Daryl's 92. Um, Zero Grave. Uh, Bloombriar. Uh, Revenant Dog. Um, I, you interviewed my guildy, um, Familia before. Oh, yes, yes. Um, sure though she was a late, she was a late comer comparatively. Um, uh, I know you, you interviewed Argos in the past and he was, he's, uh, mm -hmm. was in my community. Um, so there's just been so many and they're, they're just so special to me. And we have, you know, more coming along now because we're, we're merged and, it's been great. Um, it's, it's, it's honestly impressive that you can even uh, name so many off the top of your head like that, too. Oh, there's so many. I mean, even people outside of the community, because I've always been, try I've always tried, like, I, I love my community, but I've always tried to, you know, some guilds get really insular. Yeah. They yeah. don't really talk to other people. And Tarlock was no kind of known for being kind of Yeah, because everybody was, like, close-knit. They kind of knew each other. They knew each other, but they didn't want to <laughs> talk to other, yeah, like yeah. people outside of their own group. So I was always trying to be the person combating that. And that that is another reason I'm really passionate about, like, community fairs is, you know, we get outside of our little boxes and yeah. we talk to new people and we make new friends for life. Yeah. So I like Kumo, uh, Kumoto Kumo now. Um, mm -hmm. He's one of my best friends. Uh, he's you know, goofy. So, <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> I love him for, uh, for everything he is. So, you know, and just, you know, just people that they don't have to be in my guild to be special to me. And, um, of course, the people in my guild are very special, too. But I, I think that's not that's part of the, like, overall community spirit. Like, yeah, you know, absolutely. A healthy community. Yeah, I think so, too. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. So uh, thank you for doing this with me. I, 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 I really appreciate it, and um, I'm sorry I didn't really get to ask many questions. You were just so good at, like, going from one, you know, one topic to another that it was just kind of, like, the perfect way to get to know you anyway. Like, I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 often people say I ramble, but to me, I'm like, no, if you paid attention, you would see no, I went no. a perfectly logical topic to another. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> like, it, and it was... It was all stuff I was going to ask you anyway, so it was just kind of, yeah, it kind of went so smooth and perfect that it was like, all right. <laughs> go back and put questions in. <laughs> no. <Don't worry. laughs> oh my gosh, could you imagine? Just, just put a picture up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, I will see you all in Erin another day. Goodbye. Goodbye, Aaron, and I hope to see you at the fairs in the future. Peace in August. In August.